So when your computer's turned off, you're going to turn it on and you're going to have to press the key to enter into the BIOS boot menu. I'm working on an HP laptop here, so my key is F9. So when you hit the power key, you're going to need to repeatedly tap this key to make sure that it, you, you get it at the right time. It's usually a small window of opportunity there to uh, get it. So I'm going to just tap on the F9 key and I'll be presented with this. You should have something similar. Now, if you're on an EFI system, that's great. Make sure you choose the USB drive UEFI and hit enter. So you're going to use your up and down key and then hit enter when you select the correct device. And this is going to let us boot off of the uh, hard disk. So click try Ubuntu. And then just wait for it to start up. It should be relatively quick. And there we go. We're now booted into Ubuntu. So select the, uh, double click the install Ubuntu icon on the desktop. And when it opens the installer, select your language. And when you're ready, hit continue. You're going to want to connect to a Wi-Fi network unless you're connected through Ethernet. I've already connected to a network, so I'm not going to do this. Uh, but connect to your network so that you can download updates while installing and you can get the most fresh packages from the repositories. And hit continue. You're going to see these uh, big check marks telling us that we're all good to go. You're also going to want to check download updates while installing and also install third party software. And I've already got these checked. You want to make sure they're checked. If they're not checked, check them. You don't need to install third-party software. All this allows is for playing MP3 files and other proprietary file types. Uh, so when you're ready here, hit continue. And this next bit is going to take a little bit because it's scanning our hard drive. So when you see this screen, uh, it's going to prompt you to install Ubuntu alongside Windows. We're not going to do that. We're going to manage the partitions by ourselves manually, and that's going to give us a little bit more control. So select something else at the bottom, and then hit continue. Now it's going to scan the disk again, and you're going to see something entirely different here. All right. This is our Windows partition. We can tell by first it's formatted as NTFS and also the size of the drive. This is my free space. What you're going to want to do is right click on the NTFS file system. Hold on a second. I just got to remove this two finger scroll. There we go. Much better. This is the EFI partition. We're going to focus on the Windows partition right now. You're going to need to shrink this and in order to get the free space. So click on this and click Change down at the bottom. And you're going to just reduce the size of this. Uh, Windows does take up quite a bit of space and the applications on it. so. I recommend leaving this relatively high. Uh, I've got about 500 gigabytes that I use for my Windows partition, and I find that's comfortable. So once you've uh, done this, hit OK, and you're going to see the disk rescan, and it's going to show you that you've now got free space after your Windows partition. So we now need to set up a few partitions. So click the free space and the plus sign. And the first partition we're going to be creating is a swap area, which acts sort of like RAM, but on the hard disk. So in the size of the swap area, you're going to want to make it about double the amount of RAM that you've got. 
And when it refreshes here, we've, we see our swap area we just created with the free space after it. So now we're good to create our main partition for the installation of Ubuntu. So make sure you use X4 journaling file system and set the mount point to a forward slash and hit OK. And basically the forward slash just means the entire operating system, uh, the home directories, applications, the configurations, they're all going to be installed to this partition. Now, Linux gives us a little bit more flexibility that we're not going to really go in depth with right now, but you are able to create two different uh, partitions, one for the forward slash, the main partition, and then you can also create another one, set uh, the mount point to forward slash home, and that's going to mean that all your user directories are stored on that partition. And this makes sense for upgrading and installing different versions of Linux because the home directory will always stay intact. You won't need to format it every time you install uh, Linux and you can install Linux over the root partition. So now that we're set up here, we're basically good to go. The device for the bootloader is important. If you're not running an EFI system, you need to leave this to dev slash SDA. And what that means is that the bootloader is going to be written to the very first sectors of the hard disk, which is where non EFI hard drives store their bootloaders with Windows. So it will replace the Windows partition. Uh, or the Windows bootloader and replace it with Grub, which is the Linux bootloader, but it will also give you an option through that installation of the bootloader to boot into Windows. Every time you boot up your computer, you're gonna see boot into Linux or boot into Windows. All right, now I'm working with an EFI hard disk and hopefully you are too. Every computer released in the last few years are now EFI. And EFI is great. It's a way where you can man you can better manage dual and tri-booting different installations uh, or operating systems on your hard disk. And what this does is, uh, if you've got an EFI partition, as you can notice, mine selected in the area above is SDA2, but the type is EFI, and system says Windows Boot Manager. All right. Where we're using an EFI disk, we are going to install the EFI files for the bootloader on the existing EFI partition, which is SDA2. So when we're already here, you can now click install now. It's going to tell you that it's going to make these changes and they're going to be permanent and you may lose data if you've done something wrong. So please make sure you do this all correctly. It will leave your Windows partition intact because you're not formatting it. You're just shrinking it and you're creating a couple new partitions. So when you review these changes, hit continue, and it's gonna install the operating system now to our hard disk. And the installation procedure is exactly the same as it was in VirtualBox. So you're gonna choose your location or your time zone first. So here we're gonna select our keyboard layout. I am English US keyboard layout. So I'm just going to leave it and hit continue. Uh, and here we're going to create our user account. So I'm going to name my computer Voltron and username and password. And you do have a few options also to log in automatically or require your password. You can set this however you want. Uh, I like to require my password to log in. So just hit continue and now you're presented with this beautiful slideshow of everything Ubuntu can do. Not everything, but a few things. Um, and we're going to dive into more of these things in the future. But for right now, I'm going to pause this recording and I'll be back after it installs because it does take about 10 to 15 minutes. So when it's done, you should see a prompt like this. 
and it should tell you that the installation has been a success and you're now free to either continue testing on the USB drive or restart now. Um, you can do whatever you'd like. Just if you're going to continue testing, uh, the way you reboot is in the top right hand corner. Select the gear icon and then select shutdown.